I'm Edie Lush and I'm here inside Hub Culture Studio in Davos. It's 2018. Now, I'm fascinated to speak to the, my next guest, Pat Brown, founder and CEO of Impossible Foods. Mm -hmm. You're setting out to do something that's pretty incredible. Uh, and tell me about the journey that you've had since you started the company in 2011. Well, I won't drag you through the whole journey, <laughs> but um, so first I'll just say the mission of the company is to completely replace animals as a food production technology by 2035. Uh, so mark it on your calendars and mm -hmm. check back with me. Okay. Um, and this is dairy, fish. Fish, meat, meat dairy foods. Mm -hmm. And to do it by, ba by basically making foods that outperform in every way that matters to consumers. Number one, deliciousness. Number two, nutrition. Number three, cost, convenience, and so forth. We intend to produce all those foods that are more delicious, more nutritious, and more affordable, which sounds uh, crazy, but uh, it's completely doable. And if we do that, the market will take care of the rest and, and we'll achieve our mission, which is completely replacing animals with food production technology. And um, the way I got into this, I was a professor at Stanford and mm -hmm. I just decided, okay, um, I was just doing basic biomedical research, studying how genes work and cancer diagnosis and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I wanted to pick the most important problem in the world that I could have an impact on and I decided that the problem, without a doubt, is the environmental impact of animals as a food production mm -hmm. technology, which is... Why? Why is it such a problem? What do you have against the cow? I love cows, <laughs> actually. Um, I want them to be able to retire and live on the beach in Florida <laughs> and uh, collect their pension. But, um, no, the, the, the problem is that... Um, the use of this technology to produce these foods, animals, mm -hmm. um, according to the UN Environmental Program, is by far the most destructive technology on Earth. And it's because um, they're a major source of greenhouse gases, mm -hmm. more greenhouse gas emissions than um, every car, bus, truck, train, plane, rocket ship on Earth, um, biggest user and polluter of water on Earth, mm -hmm. um, biggest cause of wildlife and biodiversity losses by far, and that's because um, land-based animal farming occupies about 45% of the entire land surface of Earth hmm. that's used for um, either grazing or ra raising feed crops. And that's land that um, is a huge opportunity cost. So it's land that formerly provided habitat for biodiversity of all kinds and uh, for wildlife. And in fact, the, um, the impact of animal farming is the biggest reason why the populations of uh, mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, and fish are half of what they were 40 years ago, mm -hmm. according to the World Wildlife Fund. Um, anyway, so it's just a complete environmental disaster. And demand is going up, and people are not going to stop wanting these foods. That's a critical thing. Even the most ardent environmentalists, mm -hmm. by and large, eat meat and fish and dairy foods every day. Not, even though they know the problem, it's just too hard to give up foods that provide such an important source of pleasure in their lives. And so what that meant is you can't ask people to change their diet. It falls on us to create foods that they actually prefer mm -hmm. as meat, fish, and dairy foods, but to make them more sustainably. So that's what the I found the company to do. And tell me, what you have now. So what you have now is a product which competes alongside tartare, steak tartare, and a burger. Is that right? Yeah. So it's a, a the first product, first of many, but the, the launch product is um, essentially raw ground beef made from plants. It's a product that functionally uh, um, behaves virtually identical to, uh, identically to uh, raw ground beef. You can serve it as tartare, um, you can cook it as a burger, you can make dumplings, mm -hmm. and in fact, Tracy Desjardins, who's uh, um, a wonderful chef, award-winning chef in San Francisco, is, um, is here with me in Davos, and she's cooking like nine meals and serving everything from tartare to meatballs to burgers to larb to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anything and the incredible that thing eat. is that the, the ingredients are things that they're proteins from plants, so yes. tell me what they are. 
So, um, well, there's a tremendous amount of research mm -hmm. that went into figuring out how meat produces its flavors and textures. But once we understood the basic biochemical principles, which had never really been known before, um, we could be very deliberate in searching for not just any protein, not just any ingredients, but very specific uh, ingredients that had precisely the kind of biophysical properties and chemical mm -hmm. properties uh, to, to uh, deliver those, those meaty properties. Um, and, uh, but the ingredients themselves are very simple, and they're simple things from, mm -hmm. from nature. Uh, we have a, one of the proteins uh, is a protein that comes from wheat, another is a protein that comes from potatoes. So potatoes are 95% starch, but mm -hmm. the protein you've part. You've taken out the protein. Yeah, well, actually, people who make potato starch used to flush it down the drain. Right. Because it was not what they, their customers wanted. But it turns out that one of the proteins that was in that stuff they flushed mm -hmm. down the drain is perfect for matching one key property of meat. So we have a potato protein in there. And then we have a, 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 a molecule called heme, mm -hmm. which is a, a molecule that's absolutely essential for life. It's in every living cell. And um, it's what carries oxygen in your blood. It's, it's what um, your, every cell in your body uses to burn, uh, burn calories to produce energy and stuff like that. Um, and, um, and in meat, because it's super abundant in animal tissues, that abundant heme turns out to be the catalyst, the magic ingredient that um, catalyzes chemical reactions that take the simple nutrients, amino acids and sugars and, and fats and vitamins that are found in every cell, plant or animal, but heat plus throw in heme and bang, you get this huge set of uh, reactions that produce the bloody taste of raw meat. Mm -hmm. And when you cook meat, it's heme that's catalyzing the reaction that produce that explosion of flavor and aroma mm -hmm. that's such a big part of the pleasure of meat for um, people who love it. Well, so we figured that out and that meant we could just take ingredients from plants and produce the exact same experience um, with a tiny fraction of the environmental impact. One eighth the greenhouse gas emissions, a quarter the water requirement, and one twentieth the land uh, required to produce the same thing from a cow. So I'm gonna have to stop you there because I can't wait to taste it. I'm gonna have to rush out and find Tracy so that we can we can okay. make one of these burgers. You do that. <laughs> Bob, mm. thank you very much for sure. joining me here in the Hub Culture Pavilion. In fact, the studio, and I'm Edie Lush. Thank you.